Namaskar Sadhguru. Yesterday, the Prime Minister announced that Chandrayaan 3's landing spot will be named Shiv Shakti. But the moon, space, and earth all belong to humanity. So, is it appropriate that any place on the moon be named after a god or goddess from a particular culture? Thank you. Straight into the heart of Indian politics. <laughs> Apollo, Luna, Saturn, Mercury, Neptune, Venus, what are all these? <laughs> all uh, Greek gods and goddesses. Does it mean the planetary system belonged to the Greeks? <laughs> At least we landed there. <laughs> so, I'm very impressed that these days political leadership seems to have this level of wisdom. But first thing you need to understand is Shiva Shakti is not the names of some god and goddess. We are talking about two fundamental forces, clockwise, anti-clockwise, masculine, feminine. Well, in other cultures, they may call it yin and ang, yang, and so many other things. Sun and moon, Ida, Pingala. There are many, many aspects of both science and metaphysics that we can go into, but the important thing you need to understand is <clears throat> that all physical manifestation in this creation happens between two polarities. There is no question about that. This is not from the civilization that we call as Bharat. Well, this was the first civilization to speak about. But today modern science has established this beyond any doubt, that everything that is physical is in some kind of rotation or revolution of its own. It's on a spin. So in these spins, if you see, there are only two choices of how everything can spin, clockwise, counterclockwise. They call it up and down, but there are only two choices. It cannot spin in thousand different ways, it can only spin in two ways. These two we call Shiva Shakti. And it is fantastic that instead of calling that spot by their own names as they did in the past, we are calling it by appropriate terms. That will matter for the whole universe. <laughs> Understanding this and experiencing this within ourselves, is the fundamental aspect of yoga. Ida Pingala, Hatha. This is very important. And it is significant that human understanding across the world, thanks to the modern science, recognizing these deeply entrenched, entrenched civilizational aspects of this part of the world, modern science is slowly piece by piece, tiny piece by piece at a time, slowly validating its every aspect of it. 
what was spoken thousands of years ago. Many millennia ago, these things were established. If you do not know this, even something like 2700 to 3000 years ago, in this civilization, the study of the planet was called as Bhugol. This means a round planet. When everybody else in the world were arguing whether it's flat or round, here it's well established. There are ancient drawings and paintings where it is shown that planet Earth, a round ball, a globe, on the back of a turtle and going around the sun, when rest of the world, the scriptures of the world, the religions of the world, the cultures of the world and the ignorance of the world was going on saying, Earth is the center of the universe. Here, very clearly we depicted, planet Earth is going around the sun. And why a turtle back? Because a turtle cannot accelerate by itself, it is going at a steady pace. So planet is not accelerating or decelerating, at a steady pace it's going, that's why our lives are reasonably balanced. I can go on telling you many, many things, but we'll leave that there. But it's really wonderful, there is a spot on the moon. We cannot see that spot, it's on the south side. There is a spot on the moon which is Shiva Shakti. So, now, because I put my hands together, oh, Sadhguru is bow bowing down to Shiva and Shakti, he's that Linga Bhairavi. <laughs> I'm bowing down to the truth about the existence, because that's the only damn thing that matters in our life. What is the truth about this? What is the truth about everything? This is all that matters. What you make up in your head doesn't mean a damn thing, it dies with you or it kills you. <laughs> if you didn't, don't kill your ignorance soon enough, it kills you in many ways or at least it dies with you. What is true lives whether we exist or we don't exist. So what we are referring to as Shiva Shakti, shall we call it A-B? Why can't we be secular and call it A-B? You can if you want. Hello? If you want, you can call it A-B, if that's your choice. But human life cannot run just on factual truth. Human life needs aesthetic. Hello? Just on factual truth, who the hell are you? What are you worth, I'm asking? It is the aesthetic of how you sit, how you feel, how you speak, what you do. It is the aesthetic of who you are which matters. What is the truth about you? You're a, just a damn little life who pop out and pop out. That's the only truth about life. It is the aesthetic of many things that you are, little, little things which matters. So you can call it A-B. Then somebody will ask, why English language, why, we, why can't we call it a uh, a uh? <laughs> I'm saying this is a silly argument, but it is politically potential. <laughs> so, I'm surprised it popped out here <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Shiva Shakti, the Deepa is your understanding of Shiva Shakti. The Deepa is your harmony with Shiva Shakti. The more synchronized you are with Shiva Shakti, the two spins in your body of clockwise and anti-clockwise within the system of Ida Pingala, the more balance there is between these two, the more equanimous you become, less turbulence you become, and you will become higher level of perception.
Why are we talking about perception here? Moon and perception are very connected. Moon and our birth is very connected. Why Shiva is… Adiyogi is shown with a moon. Why is he a Soma Shekhar? And uh, <laughs> the fantastic thing is the chairperson of ISRO is Somnath. <laughs> I was talking to him and I said, how did your parents manage to name you so appropriately <laughs> And he said, so Sadhguru, it's Lord Shiva's name, it is not me. That is the humility, with knowledge people become arrogant. But this is a bunch of people that I've been, I've been interacting with for some time now. If you really want to see uh, the atmosphere, I wouldn't call this spiritual process, but the ambience that is needed for one to develop spiritually, if you want to see, maybe people will feel I'm stretching it too much because of the recent success of ISRO, but believe me, you go there and see, you will see the ambience is like that. Somebody that I know works very… around me, very closely around me, went there and said, Sadhguru, all these scientists and all the people who work there, they're acting like Isha meditators, Isha volunteers <laughs> I said, yes, I also felt that. They have created the ambience, all they need is a little fire and they will be there because if anything has to happen, you need ambience. You need the atmosphere. Things are happening here on this planet because there is atmosphere. Nothing much happening on the moon because there is no atmosphere, you understand that. There is a good atmosphere holding you, like how you were held in your mother's womb. Even today, Mother Earth is holding you in her womb. The pressure, the level of oxygen, the level of different gases, all this is very vital to hold you in place. If the pressure incre increases, you'll get crushed. If it decreases, you can't breathe, you'll fall apart. This is a fact. Right now, as you sit here, you're held. And how much complaints? <laughs> Hello? How many complaints? <laughs> Unbelievable. Now, Shiva Shakti. It's very significant because uh, in a way, this is the meeting of Shiva Shakti also, because the impact of the moon upon human life is very direct. If you look at the cycles, the physiological or biological cycles that are happening in our mother's bodies, it's only because of that we are born, nothing else. Hello? Only because of that. And these twenty-seven point three or four days the moon takes for its rotation and the human physiology going at the same pace. This is why Adiyogi said way back that human beings have reached physiological peak of evolution. From here on, they cannot evolve physically, they can only evolve consciously but they cannot evolve physically. That means you will not grow horns or you will not get whatever else you're thinking you must get. You will not get because biological evolution has come to its peak upon this planet. But if we go and live on another planet, we don't know what will happen to this body. It may grow, it may diminish, it… anything may happen or it may just not be suitable to exist there, we do not know. But this body was produced on this planet, from the material that's present on this planet, when we say material, it's not just earth. The vapor, the water, the gases, everything are involved. Everything is involved in this making of this. So, on this planet, it has reached that peak. So, in many ways, moon suggests that. This is why he is Somshekarar, he is Somnath. <laughs> 
And in terms of perception and in terms of re reaching the evolutionary peak, it is an important recognition and the, and the place or the spot in which the, the lunar or the Chandrayaan-3 landed is Shiva Shakti, I think it's very insightful. And I would like to say this once again, it's incredible that political leadership is rising to this level of awareness.